somebody got out of the car that was following him and shot and killed him. And he was laying down in the, in the front yard. And she said she saw him laying down uh, from her, her window. Police have not released the name of the victim. Authorities are urging anyone with information to give them a call. DeKalb County deputies have named another Ajang Ruak. They say he was involved in the shooting at the Brandon Hills condominium complex. That's where three people died and three others were wounded. Authorities have already arrested 25-year-old Ofiejo Ojego in this case. He is charged with murder and aggravated assault. New at 10, police are searching for a group that vandalized the building of the company contracted to build a police and fire training center in DeKalb County. Surveillance video from overnight shows three suspects wearing white painter suits. They shattered several windows and painted, quote, drop cop city or else on the contractor's building located in Birmingham, Alabama. Brassfield and Gorey says it suffered extensive damage, totaling nearly $80,000. All right. Governor Charlie Bailey and Kwanzaa Hall are in a runoff. It's a sprint to the finish for the two. And Collins says the differences between him and his opponent are stark. My opponent is nothing more than a corrupt career politician. He is a Democrat who is from DeKalb County. I am born and raised and live and work right here in the Denton. 10th district been here all my life well that's a person who doesn't have a record to campaign on matter of fact his daddy was a democrat he was raised as a democrat so the hypocrisy he's a rhino liberal but let's get to what's important again people want to know who's going to go to washington and fight for them collins father matt collins was a longtime republican congressman though he did begin his political career as a democrat just jones a former state lawmaker only recently switched parties but he has the the endorsement of former President Donald Trump. Collins came in first in Tuesday's primary with nearly 26% of the vote, while Jones came in second with almost 22%. Both men say they plan to keep knocking on doors and meeting with people in the 10th district to get their message out. It's just that, that, that good hard work ethic and that steady messaging. So we'll continue that, get our people to turn out and uh, turn back out for a second time and uh, take this thing across the finish line in first place. Uh, there are too many issues issues that people are confronted with right now. And so uh, that's what they saw in me and they see that in me. That's why I, I sailed to the top and I'm excited about this and we're gonna win on June 21st. The runoff election is on June 21st and early voting begins June 13th. Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Oh, that's why she supported higher gas taxes. A new sales tax supports higher property taxes. In Stacey Abrams, Georgia, it's all about her, not you. Where the investigation stands, still ahead. President Biden... News Edge reporter Rob Durienzo. Yeah, well, take a look at these. We found these at the spot where this all happened. They are tiny, but the guy who was hit has a nice-sized welt on him, and now he's weary to walk around his own neighborhood. We were walking in sessions along a rock wall, and I heard this t -t 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 sound. For Thomas Painter, a leisurely stroll around Marietta ended with a sting and a call to 911. He says the pellets were fired from a black pickup truck as he and his wife walked their neighbor's dog. And I looked back at my wife and the dog and I was like, well, thank God they weren't shot. But Painter was. Check out this welt left on him. The black pickup then sped off. As soon as that happened, they gunned it and they turned right. Like in, in less than two seconds, they were out of view. Marietta police tell Fox 5 that they traced that truck back to a 16-year-old boy who they say was behind the wheel at the time of the incident Sunday afternoon. It's not clear who, if anyone, was in the passenger seat. Cops said because of the suspect's age, they can't tell us much, but they say the teenager is charged. Neighbors on Session Street have been on edge ever since. You know that. 59 small satellites into space that will be used for various types of data collection. This was SpaceX's 22nd launch and landing of the year. After that, you have the cost of war. Here he is, transformed. 
shell shock. It's called A Soldier's Journey. Five scenes, 38 figures, every story deeply personal and emotional, especially for veterans like Wilfred Selby, a medic who treated soldiers wounded in combat. And as he looks at the faces of these sculptures, he can't help but feel overwhelmed. It's, it's very emotional. What you were trying to do. Saban has been sculpting since August of 2019. He has a four-year sculpting period, and as each section is completed, it's taken to a foundry where it's cast in bronze. By December of 2023, a soldier's journey is expected to be completed and will be shipped to the National Mall in Washington, D.C., to the World War I Memorial Park for a special unveiling on Memorial Day of 2024.